this is Chelsea from Paper Rock TO Studio and today I'm going to be showing you the, the first part of a two-part series where I show how to make a jelly printed covered journal. A lot of people have been asking about the journal that I used for the Nano Jamo videos which has jelly printing inside. I'm going to be making a journal with plain pages but it's the same process but the first part is jelly printing the covers and the inside covers. I wanted to try something new that I hadn't tried before and it has to do with how fascinated I am with the leftover paint and the, the crusty paint that's left over on a jelly a plate. And when you print with that it makes all these different designs which I absolutely love. That's my favorite part. A dirty jelly plate with lots of interesting different designs and colors. I wanted to try to create that only make my own designs and so this is a a meat tray that's just plain styrofoam and I cut off the edges to make just the flat part I don't want the curved part and that's what you saw me doing and then now I'm using a ball stylus the first time I used the more small side of the ball which just tore up the styrofoam so I turned it over and I'm using the really fat steel ball on the end of this stylus to make designs into this styrofoam and I'm just doodling nothing specific this this is really an experiment to just see if this even works I only have one uh, meat tray I made some stew and <laughs> I had this left and I saw it downstairs sitting on the table waiting for me to to use it and I'm like oh I really need to try that so I decided to try this idea and I probably saw it somewhere I don't even know I have no idea I have no link for you or anything I don't know if there's a video on this um, but I really wanted to try it and I thought it would work but I wasn't sure and I knew I was going to be making a jelly print covered journal as a Christmas gift so that's what this will end up being and there will be a link for the second part of how to make the journal and that will be in the information card and also below so yeah I'm still just drawing I, this one's really doodly. The other one I wanted, I wanted to make one that was very linear, that had a lot of lines, and I started to make that with my little straight edge there, and then that's when the styrofoam got ripped up. So this is just sheerly just drawing spirals and shapes, and and then on the other one I'll do a more linear design. And just make sure if you do this that you use a very fat ball, nothing that's sharp. Um, nothing small or spiky because it just it just tears the styrofoam and doesn't work at all that's the first thing I learned a bone folder would probably work because it it does have a point but it ha it's fat and rounded so you could probably do it with a bone folder or a really dull butter knife maybe but the this fat end of the ball stylus worked really well for this so now I'm making that more linear design. I've I've done some different lines going different directions with my straight edge and then I just drew some little pod shapes to kind of break up the lines. I'm going to be doing this more when I have more styrofoam <laughs> because it was really fun and I liked the effect. So I don't know if I'll make another video or not. I mean it's pretty self-explanatory once you watch this but I'm definitely doing it some more. I guess I'm almost done with this one and then you'll see what I do with it. This was definitely a learning process so I'll give you guys some pointers as we go. So now I'm getting out my 8x10 jelly plate and that's on a piece of glass that has some painters tape around the edges so I don't cut myself. That glass is actually from a frame and I just pulled it out of the frame to use as a basis for my jelly plate. I, I don't I like to keep mine pretty clean even though I'm telling you that I love all those little crusty bits that that get on there but I I clean it after I'm done so I'm gonna start out with some black medium body acrylic paint and a credit card it's actually a Tuesday morning card that is like for your rewards or whatever but anything straight like that would work a uh, metal spatula or something like that and all I'm doing is just dragging the paint across so that the paint is getting into the little the little 
grooves that I made with my ball stylus. And then I'm pressing that down on the plate, hoping that, that it will make the design. And bam, it does. <laughs> it makes a design. I'm very excited at this point. I'm like, wow, this is going to work. This is awesome. So I do it again. I load up the plate again. And one of the tips I'll tell you is you don't have to load up the plate again. It That uh, paint gets down in those grooves and there's plenty enough to do this plate and probably five more if you really needed to. Although it gets lighter and lighter, but the effect is still very similar. So then another tip that I need to tell you is that this needs to dry not completely solid dry enough that it would peel but it needs to be dried on there and I went off and um, I thought I needed to clean the plate I thought I needed to get that stuff out of there or else it wasn't going to work anymore so I went to my sink and I cleaned it and then that left this enough time to get nice and dry and then I'm going to kind of reactivate the paint using another layer of paint so I went ahead and put some of my very shimmery Dyna PBO paints on there and let it sit and press really hard. See how I'm using my my brayer? I'm like pressing, 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 pressing. And this is what it comes out with is a background and a foreground with lines on it, which I think is super cool, super, super cool. So I decided to, to try the other one that I made. That was the first one with the very linear designs with the pods. And then I switched to white paint just to see how that will work. Same process. I'm, I'm squeegeeing, I guess, <laughs> the paint onto there, which is harder to see with the white because the styrofoam is white, but you get the idea. This time, not reloading it, and you can see the, the image that comes out is still just as, as dark or whatever. And then I'm just cleaning it off with the baby wipe. At some point, I think I stopped cleaning them. I mean, after all, they're just styrofoam. I don't need to fuss over having it perfectly clean. Just to, just need to get enough of the paint out of the grooves that it can be used again. So this time I went for greens and blues with my PBO paints. And if you just peel up the edge there, you can tell if it's working or not, or if you need to press some more. And you'll get two prints off of each one, pretty much. The second one being much, much, much lighter, but still really cool. See, I really like that one. That one's a cool one. So now I decide I'll try it with gold paint. So there's some my gold paint. I'm thinking gold on a dark color, which will be really cool, which is what I end up doing. And remember, all these prints are going to be, well, not all of them, but some of these prints are going to be used on the journal that I made for my friend for Christmas. So be sure to check out the second video if you want to learn how to make a journal out of a cereal box. I think it's a cereal box. Anyway, some sort of a box. But it's I like all this recycling, you know. I like to use the styrofoam in the boxes. And I've got another big project planned that's going to use lots of small boxes. So that one will be on here sometime in the next couple weeks. Yeah, I guess I, I get out my smaller plates because I realize I've got a lot of um, wait time in between when I'm trying to let it dry a little bit. So I might as well use the two smaller plates that I have as well. So now I'm using some uh, dark purple and then a lighter blue and a darker blue for this one because I want that gold to really pop and doing it on my two smaller plates too. I'm having a ton of fun with this, you can tell. It's a great time. I did put way too much purple on there though. It was very gloppy. <laughs> so it was a good thing I had the two smaller plates. And yes, gloppy is a technical art term. <laughs> <laughs> okay, press, 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 press. 
pretty cool. Second one, not as cool on this one. The blue paint in the center of the plate is way too thick. I need to just get rid of it, but I keep trying to use it and it's it's thick and bumpy and it just kind of came that way. I don't really like the texture of it. So yeah, it works on the smaller plates too. Now what do I do? I forget. Oh, I just decide to, I think this is where I'm almost done, and I decide to just uh, use up what's left on my plate, my uh, palette there, the white, the black, and the gold all together. Oh, I think at some point I use brown. I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. <laughs> I'm watching this just as you're watching it. <laughs> Yeah, that was kind of just a weird mixture of paints, and it still worked just fine. Just didn't want anything to go to waste. Is this where I use the reds, maybe? Yeah, this is where I use the reds. Oh, they turned out really pretty. The reds and pinks. I think I end up using this piece on the journal, maybe. But I have a thousand ideas of how I could use this technique, so I really will be doing it some more, making some more of these little styrofoam plate things. You can probably buy styrofoam, I don't know, in a graph store. I never actually thought about that. I've bought styrofoam balls before, but not like flat styrofoam, but I bet it exists. Have to go down to Michael's and check it out. See if I can buy some, or else buy some more meat. <laughs> one or the other. I don't know. Oh yeah, this was is when I decide to try out brown. Because I've been really attracted to brown and teal lately. You know how you go through periods of what kind of colors you like, and uh, right. Now it's brown and teal, strangely. I think I'm over my teal and purple phase. If you guys are watching these videos in order. <laughs> I was going through a real teal and purple phase there for a while. Yeah, and this time I used both plates. Just mix up the design, it doesn't really matter. I don't have a lot to say, do I? I think you've pretty much got the idea of how to do this. That darker color is phthalo blue, which is actually teal, so I don't know why they just don't call it that. There's a phthalo green and a phthalo blue, and phthalo blue is teal. I didn't name all these colors. And for the smaller plates, I'm just using a quarter of a sheet of cardstock. And this is cardstock. It's actually glossy on one side and flat on the other. So I'm using the flat side because I have a ton of this. Ton, ton, ton of this kind of cardstock. Okay, I think we're almost to the next part. So as I was doing this, and I knew that I was making a gift, I thought to myself, it would be really, really cool to, to do writing on the styrofoam, because if you wrote on the styrofoam, then it was then you flipped it over and put it onto the plate, then it would be reversed, and then when you printed it again, it would be right side again. And I really wanted to try it, but I didn't have any more styrofoam, because I just had the one thing. And so then I, then I was still obsessed with doing it. I wanted to make a print that had words on it, specifically a name, because I was making these for a specific person. And so what I did was I had a, a little scrap of fun foam and I used some rubber stamps that I had and I stamped her name onto the 
fun foam, cut it out, and then attached it to a piece of chipboard with a little lid on the I glued a little lid on the back so that I could hold it. And so then the name is Frontways on this little temporary stamp that I made. So then when you stamp it onto the plate, it's reversed so that when you print it, it, it comes out the right way. So I just, this was still part of the same jelly printing session. So I would just threw here, this part here on the end so that you guys could see that too. Because if some, if you want writing uh, to be on a jelly print, it has to be reversed or else it comes out backwards. I don't know if anybody's ever tried that, but if you just try to like write on it with a fine tip um, paint applicator thing or something, it doesn't work unless you know how to write backwards. That's probably a useful skill, writing backwards. So this is still kind of the same process. It's the, the dried crusty paint on the plate and then, add, and then add another layer of paint on the top and let it attach to that, let it marry together and, and kind of reactivate the paint. And then there you go. This also worked very well. I was happy. Press hard, press hard. Use your muscles. Okay. And there you go. Her name is Kylie. And it's the right direction around. So I hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to check out the second part of the video if you want to see the finished project. And it goes through and shows you how to make a journal using a recycled cereal box or something of the sort. And these are all the pictures of most of the prints. Some of them got used on the journal. So anyway, that's it. Bye-bye.